The cost of white goods will skyrocket next year. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to look at a few things which are going to have an impact on the cost of white goods and a lot of imported products here in Australia, everyone. Now, a viewer sent me some information that will go through, but before we go through that, they're looking at, well, they're getting quotes from logistic companies about shipping stuff here to Australia for their business. Before we look at that, I thought we'd get a bit of an overview of the white good industry and just freight in general. Now, if we jump over here, this is a video I did in October on the 27th, just looking at the Freytos uh, Baltic Index and the prices of shipping around the world. You can see the Global Container Index is at $2,230. Oh, and look at that climb up. And right now, it's now at $2,264. It's continuing to go up. The Pacific is at $3,852. So they're all getting a little bit higher. What about North America? Is that one down? It's down a couple of dollars. Nope, sorry. It's up right now when I click on it again. So this is where you can see just global shipping prices. From you know January this year, it's gone from $1,400 up to nearly two, three. So $2,264. There you go. That is a substantial increase for container shipping around the world. A real big increase. Now, if we'll jump here to the Observatory of Economic Complexity, I know it's a website I refer to often, but it's a very good one. It's very useful and very convenient. You can see here what Australia is exporting, where we're exporting it to, you know, China, of course, but also what we're importing and where we're importing it from. You can see what we're importing is much more complicated than other things. Now, for this example, let's have a look here at household washing machines, because that's the industry or part of the industry this uh, viewer is in, importing products to Australia. And I thought we'd you know, get a bit of an overview about it because recently I bought, we bought a new washing machine. The last one we had pretty much lasted me since when I first ever moved out, since my bachelor days. And now it finally died or it didn't quite die. It was still going, but she was going pretty rough, I guess, with uh, five children in the household and uh, a you know, sister-in-law and a father-in-law living with us. It got a bit of a run for its money. So... The top exporters of household washing machines were China at 3.91 billion, Poland, then at 1.36 billion, Thailand, Turkey, and Germany. Often, <clears throat> you'll have the big brand names, the good European brand names, will have a good quality product made, or just say a higher quality product made in Germany, and then the knockoff, or the cheaper one with Chinese parts, same brand, made in Turkey. And that's one way of them getting it cheaper. So you really have to look at the models. Look at the models to know what you're getting. Now, look at the product complexity there. It's 266 in the world. So these are reasonably complex products and components put together compared to the things that we're exporting, coal, iron ore. Our complexity rating here in Australia is negative 0.093, the complexity of our economy. We're not that advanced, everyone. Don't let anyone trick you into thinking that. In many ways, we're still a colonial nation. Or if anything, we've gone a bit backwards. Now, if we click here on marine trade, I mean, just have a look at all of the international shipping going around the world. Just to think that's getting more and more expensive. And how much comes to Australia? I don't think you can even get a washing machine manufactured in Australia anymore. I think Westinghouse manufactures some stuff here. We wanted to get a Westinghouse fridge. I think it came from New Zealand, which is close enough. It's just, you know, the East Island, isn't it? So let's have a look at this information that was sent to me by a viewer. Oops, hang on. Sent to me by a viewer, and they asked that I, you know, hide all the important information. And I'll have a shot of coffee before we get into it. So please see the attached first half of November quotation for your reference. As discussed, the huge demand for container shipping and subsequent container equipment shortage has created Shipageddon. Okay, so we're facing Shipageddon. I'll, I'll include that in the title. I like that. <laughs> the short of the following is you need to keep your orders flowing and factories produce, uh, producing. You're going to need to ship a small percentage of your cargo on market rates. So Vietnam to Australia, some of the challenges. Southeast Asia trade is experiencing unprecedented supply and demand issues. 
Southeast Asia is the gateway for all cargo from Southeast Asia, the Indian subcontinent, Middle East, Africa, South America, and parts of Europe. Four out of nine services stopped accepting bookings to Australia in September due to congestion at Australian terminals. Wonder why that's happening. Which made it impossible for the shipping lines to maintain schedule integrity. The remaining services, AAX1 and AAX2, three of the five shipping lines have stopped accepting bookings to Sydney. Wonder why that is. What you need to know. The four suspended services equate to approximately 45 to 55% market share for Southeast Asia. The service suspension and the two services not accept- accepting bookings to Sydney equates to 80 to 90% market share to Sydney being removed in September. 80 to 90% market share. Why isn't this in the news, everyone? <laughs> Maybe it's just in the trade literature, you know? Surely this will have to have an economic impact on some of the the imports, but it won't be felt until next year. Uh, CMA, CGM are the world's fourth largest shipping lines. They own CMA, CGM, ANL and APL, holding the second largest market share from Southeast Asia to Australia. CMA, CGM have advised they have major equipment issues throughout Southeast Asia with Vietnam and India experiencing major container equipment shortages with 40 GP and 40 HCs worst affected. CMA, CGM are also implementing a C Priority Go surcharge. This is to guarantee equipment supply and loading on the vessels. Market rates are now between US 2300 and 2750 per 40 HC. However, this is subject to space and continu- continu- and continually seeing bookings rejected, rolled, or cancelled. Market rates are expected to increase to US dollars 2750 and 3300 per 40 foot HC from November 2020. So they're ex- they're already going up. I mean, look at that change there. That's a, that's a decent change in one month. So China to Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Severe lack of 40 GP and 40 HC equipment in China is creating bidding wars as importers and forwarders look to secure equipment in space. Shipping lines selecting what equipment is released and to whom based on highest paying trade routes and customers. Several shipping lines still refuse or limit bookings to Sydney. Sydney again. Wonder why that is. Hmm. Market rates are increasing US 300 to 600 per 40 HC per month at the moment. What you need to know. Marisk, the world's largest shipping line, which controls approximately 10 to 15% market share to the east coast of Australia, stopped accepting, accepting bookings to Sydney from early September 2020. Market rates to Sydney are US 600 per 40 HC higher than Melbourne and Brisbane. This is either reflected as a Sydney congestion surcharge or increased, or increased to base rate. The container equipment shortage that is not expected to be resolved until March, April 2021, everyone. Well, lucky they continued job keeper and bonus, oh, sorry, job seeker bonus until then. Market rates to Sydney are now between US 4th, whoa, 4,200 to 4,800 per 40 HC in October. However, this is subject to space and continually seeing bookings rejected, rolled or cancelled. Market rates to Brisbane and Melbourne are now between 3,600 and 4,200 per 40 HC in October. We expect rates to exceed 5,000 per HC into Sydney from China by the 15th of November, so in five days, and 4,500 per HC into Brisbane and Melbourne. If you need cargo here before Christmas, be prepared to accept a higher rate. So, supply and demand statistics. So this is the 2021 September port statistics in New South Wales port stats. So import volumes at Sydney port are down 18.53% compared to September 2019. Vessel arrivals are down 37% compared to September 2019. Vessel arrivals are down due to port congestion in Sydney creating significant delays. Stats are based on arrival dates and where a lot of vessels delayed and arrived in October they were scheduled for September. Several services have omitted Sydney or refused to take bookings. What's going on in Sydney again, guys? Container volumes were down 18%, with vessel arrivals down 37%. This 
this is uh, shows that demand is up 21 percent compared to the same period last year so new south wales september year-to-date comparison so import volumes at sydney port are up one percent compared to the same period in 2019 vessel arrivals are down 20 percent compared to the same period 2019 several services have admitted sydney again there are a lot of vessels delayed in october we've read that so the victoria september 2021 port statistics import volumes into sydney port. why are they doing sydney ports probably victorian ports are up three percent no change in vessel arrivals so there we have it and this was from well Vale while logistics was sending this out to some people who were you know organizing this for their business importing products here to australia which a lot of people do i asked him if there are any manufacturers here and there were very few for most things so it's very interesting everyone we're going to see we're going to see ship again is going to result in massive inflation in the costs of well in the cost of imported products here in australia very, just from the this you know jump in the cost of shipping over here what do you think and who will they blame it on next year better hurry and get your products in now quick and early as always guys let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next episode.